So I just want to welcome everyone. Um, this is the team that made Live Out Loud, and I'm really very excited to be with you all today. Um, my name is Sarah Cooper. I'm the Director of Community Engagement for Pennsylvania Ballet. Um, and like I said, I'm just thrilled to be with you all. Um, I consider you, many of you, really very close friends. Charlie and I have been working together for years. Um, and this film has given Pennsylvania Ballet a chance to highlight and celebrate the work that we do with ArtReach. Um, and, it's a, and it's a little sampling of the community work we do with many different partners uh, in many different facets of Philadelphia. So with that, I'm gonna allow all the panelists to introduce themselves and we're gonna start with Stephanie. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and um, I'm just uh, from Overbrook to Philadelphia. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Glenn. I'm Glenn. I was the director of the film, and I had so much fun watching you learn that fantastic dance. Hi, my name is Melissa Chassie. I'm the school administrator for the School of Pennsylvania Ballet. Um, and was the teacher for the Live Out Loud project. And my name is Charlie Miller, and I'm the director of Access Philly for ArtReach, and I am the co-conceiver <laughs> with Sarah of this amazing project. So thank you all for participating. And I am just gonna first off, right off the bat, we're gonna go right to Sarah Cooper and um, give you a little little background. So we had created one project that culminated with a short documentary by Glenn Holston and Fresh Fly in 2017. Uh, so my question for you, Sarah, is why repeat another massive <laughs> program with our reach and Pennsylvania Ballet in 2018? What made this opportunity different than the year before? So Pennsylvania Ballet and my job in particular is to create programming that reaches out to many different people of many different communities throughout Philadelphia. So this program is really one of many programs that we do. We normally do not have a film crew covering us. Um, we were lucky to really have, you know, have a film made about this program twice. So thank you, Glenn, for falling in love with it the first time and then doing it again. Um, you know, when we first started doing this, I actually approached Samantha Dunster and I said, look, we did I Am before. Um, I need another choreographer. Do you have any, uh, any ideas of who that person could be? And she immediately suggested Melissa. They had worked together for a long time before Melissa was at Pennsylvania Valley and she immediately suggested her. Honestly, I was like, Taff? We, we don't do Taff at Pennsylvania Valley. Why are we doing Taff? Um, but then thinking about it, I, what I loved about it is that you had the students from Overbrook School for the Blind, and then you also had the Pennsylvania Ballet, two dancers, both interfacing um, with the dance discipline that neither one of them had had much experience in. So um, I thought that was really exciting. Awesome. Good answer, Sarah. Um, <laughs> Glenn, a similar question for you. Uh, why this story? Uh, did you love working with me and Sarah so much that you had to do a second film or like what, why did you say yes to us again? I think is the basic question. Well, it was, a, it was an easy yes. I mean, the ingredients were all so delicious. Working on I Am was so satisfying. I mean, having access to the rehearsal period and because it's a finite rehearsal period, it's almost like watching a short story unfold. It's not like an overwhelming amount of time to commit. So uh, it was a 10 week period. And so then you, it culminates in a performance. So when you came to the office and you said the next project was about TAP, um, the editor of the film and one of the producers on the project, Meg Sarakan, is a TAP dancer and she lit up and I lit up. And um, so yeah, we were, all, and we'll do it again. I mean, the, the hospitality shown to us by the ballet and the crew and watching a story unfold, there's nothing like it. We don't have an agenda. We don't know the beginning, middle, and end of a film when we start a, a, a project like this. So it's really fun to show up, be present together, and then get to know people like Stephanie and Brandon and Danielle and, and, and some of the PA Ballet Two dancers and just watch the chemistry sort of happen and unfold. And then you think you know what the beginning of the movie is when you're filming it, but it only happens in editing. So it's a really exciting process. Absolutely. Just for the viewers at home, 
Um, whenever Glenn Holston uses the word delicious, it is the greatest thing that he can say about a process. So I'm glad that he said it on our panel today. Um, thanks, Glenn. Uh, Melissa, so a um, little backstory. Sarah already gave it, but you moved to Philly from Connecticut to take a job with Pennsylvania Ballet School. And suddenly you're asked to not only teach a tap dance program, but you would be teaching it to young adults coming from very different backgrounds. And your every move would be taped by a documentary film crew. Why did you say yes? And what urged you to make this project happen? Um, I have to agree with Glenn that it was a very easy yes. Uh, tap was always my passion. I, I trained in multiple genres. Uh, when I was younger, but it was by far my favorite. I find it very methodical. There are only so many fundamentals um, and you build upon that. I think it's a, a, a good genre for beginners. Um, and really, I think anybody, anybody can do it. Um, I had taught a, a blind child in the past. I had taught a tap to classical ballet dancers in the past. Um, I just thought it was, it was a great fit that I mean coupled with the fact that you don't need to see it you can hear it you can feel it um I just was excited to to start the project I knew it was going to be a great fit awesome thank you Melissa um okay Miss Stephanie so a little background for the viewers out there I had met you at the Barnes Foundation when we did an accessible gallery tour and art making activity with Overbrook School for the Blind so when Sarah Cooper and I decided that we were gonna partner with your school, I specifically asked for you to be a part of this program. So what I, want to, what I want to hear from you, Stephanie, is what were your initial reactions and thoughts when Miss Susan asked you to do this project with us? Well, I was, you know, first I was a little bit nervous because I get nervous. And then I didn't know what to say. I was like, oh, can you do me like, into tomorrow or something so I can think and then I was like first I did say no but then um, after that Mr. Charlie talked to me one again for another trip that we went to the bar missing and then he talked to me and then yeah I, I decided to do it and thank goodness for all of us that you said, finally said yes. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, thanks for that, Stephanie. Um, yeah. Melissa, I want to I wanna sort of have you share your first impressions of the Overbook students when they arrived at the PA Ballet Studios and you got to meet Stephanie and her fellow, fellow students. Just give us some first impressions or thoughts. Sure. Um, I expected everybody to be introverted and a little bit shy. I mean, that's kind of typical with any kind of beginner class. Everyone has to warm up, uh, but they were not. They were enthusiastic and outgoing and friendly and just so full of life. So I, I completely didn't expect that. Um, and then just also one of my first impressions with it was how present they were in every moment. Just, I mean, using all of their other senses, you know, the smelling my hand lotion or feeling my hair hit their arm or hearing the pen click. They were just absolutely present in every moment, enjoying it. Um, that really, really impressed me. Awesome. Yeah, that's so great. Uh, Glenn, so what were your initial thoughts about the two groups when you first started shooting the film? And to take the question, the question a step further, what was different than our first project together with I Am? Well, part with what was the same, you have a lot of people. And when I'm directing, I'm the director of photography, Phil Bradshaw, looks at me and says, what should we focus on? And if you've got six ELA two dancers and six Overbrook School for the Blind Dancers, and they're all fabulous. That's a really great question. Like, what do we do? So at each rehearsal, we would sort of decide, all right, we're going to deal with, we're going to focus on Stephanie today and the relationship that I see may be happening with her and her partner, uh, Catherine. Or we're going to focus on wide shots, because last time we were all in close up. And you know, I know I always have the big picture in mind. I know a film can't be all one or the other. So that's the same. The challenge of filming a dance rehearsal is, is, is challenging. The home base is always the choreographer. You know, Melissa's wearing a microphone. 
In fact, one of the great pleasures uh, in post-production is hearing all the things she said that I didn't really catch while we were filming because I was on the other side of the room. So that whole process of going through the footage um, is, is quite wonderful. But first impressions are anything can happen. Let's all be have like our antenna up and I'm looking everywhere all at once and tapping the, uh, Phil on the shoulder and saying, you know, trying to help direct his attention to something that I see happening over here. And I'm looking at a monitor. So if it's not working out, we always have to pivot and readjust. But it's, a, it's, um, it's not quite a dance, but it's a little, it's a bit of choreography. Love it, love it, love it. Um, Melissa, Gwen covers this in the film a little bit, but I, I want to list off all of the barriers and roadblocks <laughs> that we experienced in a 10 week rehearsal period to get to the performance of Live Out Loud, okay? So we, we, we missed three out of the 10 rehearsal weeks because of snowstorms. We had two dancers who couldn't complete the project. We had two separate dancer injuries. Your daughter <laughs> jumped into tap with three weeks to go. I think it was three weeks. And we had a pretty rough tech rehearsal the day before the <laughs> performance. Now, be honest, what were you thinking as we kept having to put out one fire after another leading up to the performance? Um, honestly, my interior dialogue was, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, there are a lot, a lot of challenges, but I think at some point um, I just had a shift and let go of whether or not the performance would be pleasing to the audience and just really focus on um, how the performance aspect made the kids feel. Like I, I couldn't wait. Um, it's something very special as a performing artist when you finish to get that audience feedback to hear that applause and just be swept up in that moment. And so I think with all of those challenges, I just had to shift my focus to what was really important, you know, that, that outcome that they get that experience and that, that rush and that feeling at the end, which I think they did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Um, Glenn, what, one of the things that I truly love about your work is that you allow the humans involved to evolve and come into their own as the process unfolds. So who, who surprised you? And bet, maybe better yet, did you see the film going one way and then some catalyst pushed the direction of the film in another way? Well, um, we decided that um, Stephanie and her partner, Catherine and Justin, and his partner, Santiago, felt like they were really interesting relationships to watch. Um, with I Am, we never really had a main character. And in this film, it's not a main character. It's like these, these main teams to watch. So that's what I talked about, about like sort of like changing your focus in the filming. And so we paid a lot of attention. And then when we um, hit the dressing room um, the day of, when they were making each other up, and we just went, the camera, that's how the film starts. The camera pans from one, one moment Stephanie and Catherine are doing makeup over to the next room right next door where Justin and Santiago are doing, getting ready for the film. That's when I felt like the film kind of coalesced for me actually in that that's, I knew while we were filming it, how super it was. I knew all that backstage stuff was so great. And I knew that that's how we were gonna start the movie. So things reveal themselves to you. You just have to get out of the way and let them do it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. the. That opening sequence, when I finally saw the film, I immediately started to tear up because I saw the relationship and you delivering it at the beginning of the film was a primer, it was such a beautiful primer that, yeah, I'm so I'm actually getting a little, yep, okay. So, um, <laughs> um, so Stephanie, uh, as Gwen just said, and all of us experienced with the film, we were lucky enough to see the bond between you and Catherine like blossom and grow over these 10 weeks as you were dancing together. So Stephanie, I really want you to share with me your initial impressions of Catherine and how you ended up becoming so comfortable with her as your partner. I mean, I was like the first week, because we came first and then I think the second week they came. And then um, I asked Catherine, like love, I'm gonna be with you, right? Like. I'm gonna be your partner. And she's like, yeah, I can know. We was like, oh, okay. And then um, we became really close, actually friend and 
she is so nice and she helped me whatever I needed to. And yeah, we, you know, we just can't stop us and have fun. Yes, you did. And we saw it in the film. And you, I think, did you talk to Catherine the day that the film premiered or did you talk the day after? Did you guys talk on the phone? We, we talk on the phone. We still talk and stuff. And she is, uh, we talk, she, she don't, sadly, she don't do ballet no more. I was like, I was so, I was so sad when I heard that, but she's doing art now. Yep. yep. So, yeah, we still talk. Awesome. That's so great. Sarah, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the impact that this project has on the dancers from Pennsylvania Ballet. So what do they gain as artists by participating in a project like this? And how do you think it shapes their futures as artists? Sure. So, um, I mean, I think for a lot of them, obviously, there's a very process that they're going through both artistically and also as Stephanie talked about socially right they're finding connections um, with their partners um, I think that the hope that that these projects um, the hope that these projects will give the dancers is that any kind of exposure to diversity to different voices to people that are approaching things um, differently, whether it's overwork or any, again, any other group of people is beneficial to the richness that they're then going to bring on stage or the richness that that will inform their life and then therefore inform their artists. Great. Thank you for that. Glenn, can you share with us an aha moment? as the man behind the camera that like affected you as a filmmaker and artist yourself? Or from this project? From this project, sorry, yeah. Well, I think I mentioned the being backstage with everybody and having um, that intimacy revealing itself. And I knew we were capturing, it. That's, that's like, we're getting it. As I mentioned, when you're in the rehearsal studio and the, sometimes I have to go across the other side of the room from where the camera is and I'm watching on a monitor and I'm, I'm wondering how this is all going to come together. I'm trusting that it will because I work with really great people uh, and it always does. But that moment um, in the backstage when they were all in the huddle room and they in the huddle and they were wishing each other luck and that felt really good. And then the other hot moment was listening, reviewing the footage um, once we had it all filmed and just realizing there was lots of little, little, little moments that feel small, but when you add them together, they become big moments of, in a film. And also when Jackson does his imitation of Santiago. <laughs> yes. That was a special talent that I didn't know he had. And that was like, just so, so fun. And, and, and then... Yeah. Oh, so good. Good old Justin. Yeah. Um, Stephanie. Uh, yeah. So tell us what it was like right after the performance was complete and you realized all your hard work had paid off. How did you feel? I was like, man, we did it, like, like, oh my god, like, everybody was clapping and stuff, even in the beginning, like, when we was just doing our move and stuff, they were all clapping and stuff, but then when it's finished and everybody's clapping, it feel like, like, your hairs from your skin go up, like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, the, the, joy on all of the dancers faces was amazing there's even this one moment where brandon lifts his bouquet of flowers above his head and it was just it was his moment you know just like fist pumping with these flowers in the air oh it was so great yeah it was as, as soon as it was done stephanie said let's do it again <laughs> 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 and probably poor Melissa was like, maybe give me a little break. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, so Melissa, we're two years out from the performance. And like, how has your craft as a choreographer and teacher and artist been affected by this, by this project? Um, I think over the years as a teacher or a choreographer, your perspective continues to change. 
Um, I spent a, a very long time uh, training and choreographing um, for the competitive circuit. And I think even at that point, you know, there's always that speech before the kids go on stage. It's, it's not about winning, you know, you put in the hard work, now just enjoy it, do your best. Um, so I've kind of always had that. It's not about going for the gold perspective, but this, I think even more so gave me a greater appreciation and it's not even always about the performance. Um, it's also, there's so much enrichment just in the process of learning itself. Yeah, absolutely. And you are so good at that process <laughs> with these students. <laughs> um, Sarah, wh so why do we do this work? Why go through all the logistics and the small <laughs> fires and the big fires and the barriers to create accessible programming like Live Out Loud? And why is it such a focus and commitment of Pennsylvania Ballet? Um, I think that Pennsylvania Ballet and Melissa and myself, um, you know, as artists and Glenn, we want to share our art with other people. So the more people we reach, the better we're doing that job. Um, and I think that's really, really the simple, the simple way that we look at it, right? We want as many people to see dance as possible. Um, we want as many people to experience dance. I mean, I think when we first, Charlie, you and I started doing programming, it was really very passive experience for many um, of the individuals that we brought in, right? You would come in, you would see a performance, you would see a rehearsal, and that's not that that's not magical, it absolutely is. But having this secondary, deeper experience where individuals are actually dancing, um, I think you develop performers out of it. I think you develop your best advocates from it. Um, and you're getting people that, that have embodied the art form. Um, and then they begin to take it forward. So that's why we do it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Gwen, uh, third film with... <laughs> Sarah and I, what are, what are you thinking? Are we, what? <laughs> I believe you have a lot of recorded sessions, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it always ends up. Sarah and I go to lunch and then we call up Glenn and we're like, we have an idea and will well, you do it? You are gifted, Charlie. Your energy is very infectious. And I have to say that goes a long way in committing to something that when you say yes at a table and you realize two years down the road, you're gonna be finished with it you're good at making that feel like not a big thing. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. You. Um, so I know like how blessed our reach and I are to have two beautiful pieces of film document the work that we do. And I really mean that as someone who strives to create access everywhere I go, but are there any closing thoughts or reflections that you want to share before Sarah, you know, says goodbye to the panel. And I'm going to start with you, Stephanie. Is there any closing thoughts or anything you'd like to share with us? Well, to be honest, Lisha, um, of course, um, I thought I would not be able to do that type of thing because when we're, they was trying to see our shoes um, side, um, I was like, oh, man, it's big. <laughs> like, uh oh. Uh, what I'm going to do, and then yeah, uh, the first practice I was I had to practice with my own shoes because they didn't have my side, but then they find my side, and still it was a little bit big. I had it to book double size, <laughs> <laughs> but you made it work for yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do, and Glenn captures that moment with the Absolutely. with them two big tap shoes and it, it is kind of great because we were like how tiny are your feet yeah. <laughs> that we had to work? yeah but you made it work stephanie you made it work which is awesome yeah thank you <laughs> and and len who is the gentleman who's actually fitting you stephanie do you remember len he comes yeah. from a, a long line of professional dance fitter people <laughs> his father did i mean a long line um you know, that family has really been a part of Philadelphia's dance culture for a long time. It was great to have him in the film. Yeah. And you almost stumped him, Stephanie. You almost stumped <laughs> you him. You almost stumped him. <laughs> and that's hard. That's really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, 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 we made it through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Melissa, any, like, closing thoughts or feelings about what we've done together? 
course. Um, I'm just so grateful uh, for the work that ArtReach and Pennsylvania Ballet are doing together. And thank you, Glenn, for the endearing, inspiring film and, you know, everybody at Overbrook for bringing so much joy. Uh, my takeaway, of course, is live out loud. Of course. There's a lot of fear in attempting the unknown and facing those challenges and, you know, students at Overbrook or PB2. Um, issues with taking that challenge on absolutely absolutely sarah what are your thoughts before we end up letting you close out the session um i mean i think i i i agree with melissa i think that the wonderful thing about performing arts right is that it is a in-person out loud visual live art form Performing arts is going to have a challenge. We've had a challenge, obviously, with COVID, and we're going to have a challenge moving forward. So um, my thoughts are support the arts. You know, get out there, support. Um, Pennsylvania Ballet is going to be doing a lot of virtual programming, um, and we want people to see that. Yeah. So it's not quite live art, but uh, it's, it's what we got right now. And um, honestly, my hope is that we start using technology. People like Glenn, people in the film business, this you know for a long time but we start using technology to tell stories um that otherwise we would have been given live that now it's going to push us to really think about the art form in a different way and i think that's exciting yeah absolutely glenn any last thoughts or feelings from you our amazing filmmaker uh, i'm just so grateful for the invitation um from all of you and uh allow me to sort of hover for a long time and capture without questioning what we're up to and what we're doing with all that footage. Um, the trust factor is big and uh, it was there from the start. So my, me and my team, which includes, you know, the producer Shane Gregg and Meg Sarakan, the editor and director of photography, Phil Bradshaw, we're also grateful for the, for the invite. And I think I can say yes for them as well to the next adventure. Awesome. Hope I can yeah. Say yes. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. I think before I turn it over um, back to Sarah to uh, close us out, you know, just a huge thank you once again to Fresh Fly. So this is the production company that works with Glenn and creates these amazing, beautiful moments that we all get to enjoy. There's, there's a lot of people behind the scenes over there that come at this work with heart and and amazing dedication. Um, obviously, Donna, thank you from Hands Up Productions for doing the ASL today and um, the amazing Tammy from Caption Access who is providing our captioning to make sure that this panel discussion is super accessible um, for this amazingly accessible film that Glenn Holston created for us. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, well, and I wanna thank you, Charlie, because um, really through this partnership, Pennsylvania Valley has, has dramatically expanded our reach. Um, so I want to thank you for that. I also want to thank you for um, for helping us know and figure out that being accessible is not that difficult, right? We were the first Kimmel residency company to offer a sensory friendly live show. We, we started with, you know, the Blockbuster Nutcracker um, and it was a non-event and it was a fun event and I think people get intimidated with, um, with accessibility. And I really thank you for saying, just walk forward in it, right? Ask those questions, you're right by me. Um, and we make programming more expansive and reaching more people. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to remind everyone out there that uh, we are really lucky to be streaming this on the Pennsylvania Valley website. So again, it's going to be streaming on our website until August 15th. So watch it again share it with other people. We want to keep on getting the buzz out there. And I also would love people to come to Pennsylvania Valley's website, check out community engagement page. We're going to have an enormous amount of virtual programming um, that is free and accessible to Philadelphians. So visit us there. And thank you all. I hope to keep on connecting and seeing you soon. Bye everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.